If faith is a mystery, there are no places in the Christian world where the mystery is deeper than in Lalibela. 800 years ago, an Ethiopian king ordered a new capital for Christians. At 8,000 feet, on the central plateau of Ethiopia stand 11 churches, each carved from a single, gigantic, block of stone. No bricks, no mortar, no concrete, no lumber, just rock sculpted into architecture, the 11 rock-hewn churches of Lalibela are monolithic churches located in the western Ethiopian highlands near the town of Lalibela, named after the late 12th and early 13th century King Gevra Meskel or Lalibela of the Zagwe dynasty, who commissioned the massive building project of 11 rock-hewn churches to recreate the holy city of Jerusalem in his own kingdom. The site remains in use by the Ethiopian Orthodox Christian Church to this day, and it remains an important place of pilgrimage for Ethiopian Orthodox worshippers. It took 24 years to build all the 11 rock-hewn churches. Lalabella is a town in the Amhara region of Ethiopia. It is a tourist site for its famous rock-cut monolithic churches. The whole of Lalabella is a large and important site for the antiquity, medieval, and post-medieval civilization of Ethiopia. To Christians, Lalibela is one of Ethiopia's holiest cities, and a center of pilgrimage. The churches are said to have been built during the Zagwe dynasty, under the rule of king, although it is more likely that they evolved into their current form over the course of several phases of construction and alteration of pre-existing structures. During the reign of Lalibela, a member of the Zagwe dynasty who ruled Ethiopia in the late 12th century and early 13th century, the current town of Lalibela was known as Roa. The saint king was named because a swarm of bees is said to have surrounded him at his birth, which his mother took as a sign of his future reign as king of Ethiopia. The names of several places in the modern town and the general layout of the rock-cut churches themselves are said to mimic names and patterns observed by Lalibela during the time he spent as a youth in Jerusalem and the Holy Land. Lalibela, revered as a saint, is said to have visited Jerusalem and attempted to recreate a new Jerusalem as his capital in response to the taking of Old Jerusalem by Muslims in 1187. The king, Lalibela, is said to have traveled the 1,600 miles to Jerusalem. Legend has it, when he returned and Jerusalem fell to the Islamic conquest, Lalibela ordered a new home for Christianity. Each church was carved from a single piece of rock to symbolize spirituality and humility. The Christian faith inspired many features receiving biblical names, even Lalibela's river is known as the River Jordan. Lalibela remained the capital of Ethiopia from the late 12th into the 13th century. At an altitude of around 2,480 meters the archaeological site consists of five churches north of the town's River Jordan, five south of the river, and one independently located. The churches in each grouping are connected by a system of tunnels and trenches. Beat Georgies, the 11th church, is connected to the others by trenches. The northern churches are Beat Medhain Alam, Beat Maryam, Beat Golgotha Michael, Beat Meskel, and Beat Dinajel. The southern churches are Beat Emmanuel, Beat Mercorius, Beat Abba Libanos, Beat Liam, and Beat Gabriel Ruffel. The layout and names of the major buildings in Lalibela are widely accepted, especially by local clergy, to be a symbolic representation of Jerusalem. This has led some experts to date the current church construction to the years following the capture of Jerusalem in 1187 by the Muslim leader Saladin. Architecture, the rock-hewn churches at Lalibela are made through a subtractive processes in which space is created by removing material. Out of the eleven churches, for are freestanding, monolithic, and seven share a wall with the mountain out of which they are carved. The churches are each unique, giving the site an architectural diversity that is evident by the human figures of bar-reliefs inside Bet Golgotha, and the colorful paintings of geometrical designs and biblical scenes in Bet Mariam, moldings and string courses divide larger structural shapes into smaller sections in many of the churches. All eleven churches were the result of a process using the basic tools of hammers and chisels to excavate trenches surrounding the monolithic and semi-monolithic structures, as well as a system of tunnels which connected two separate groups of the churches with each other out of the scoriaceous basalt. The construction was done from top to bottom. 
The geology of the region partially determined the structure of the churches and their hydraulic systems. Igneous in nature, the rocky massif of the church complex is primarily composed of two kinds of volcanic basalt. The churches have been carved top-down from the sections of porous basaltic scoriae using chisels, axes, and other blades. Workers first traced the perimeter of the structure on the rock face, then isolated the main structure of the church. Finally, the inner mass was sculpted as the exterior was refined and ornamented. Unlike in built construction, where the last element constructed is at the top, this method of construction leaves the most recently hewn element at the bottom. To avoid flooding from underground rivers and water tables, the church builders excavated drainage canals and trenches. The roofs of the four freestanding monolithic churches slope at the same angle of the rocks from which they were carved, further promoting drainage. Additional hydraulic systems filled cisterns and baptismal pools, including the three pools in the courtyard of Beat Mariam. The churches of Lalabella are square or rectangular in form, with basilical or cruciform plans. Except where geological formations forced alterations, the churches follow the orthodox custom of placing a door at each of the western, northern, and southern sides. Steps and steep pedestals lead visitors upward into the churches, lifting them from the carved trenches and pathways. The doorways and window frames exhibit multiple typologies throughout the complex, including steliform, ogival, cruciform, and axamite. Both the steliform and axamite style windows and doors are direct quotations from the architecture of the Axumite Empire, which reigned in present-day northern Ethiopia and Eritrea from the 1st through the 8th century. The circa 10th century Axumite architectural revival at Lalabella may have arisen to legitimate the rule of the Zagwe dynasty kings by visually linking them to the formerly powerful empire. Rising from a stepped podium, the Church of Beit Emmanuel best exemplifies this sculpted version of Axumite architecture. All four facades are carved to resemble the empire's favored building technique of layering long horizontal beams with mortar and stones, which created a rhythmic alternation of recessed and projecting surfaces. The upper and lower windows and doors appear to be framed by the wooden beam heads typical of Axumite construction, while the central windows mimic the form of the monumental Axumite stele. The rug-covered floors of the churches are roughly hewn, and rise or fall in height to delineate different sacred zones. Bracketed pillars support flat ceilings, barrel vaults, and domes, while partially carved structural elements indicate abandoned construction sites. Semicircular arches dominate interior spaces, reflecting both Ethiopian architectural precedents and motifs common in manuscript illuminations. Many of the churches include friezes of blind or open axamite style windows in the upper choir area. While the majority of churches have only geometric ornamentation, Beat Golgotha Michael has bar-leaf carvings of human figures on its interior walls, and Beat Mariam has an exterior frieze of horsemen, variously interpreted as saints or King Lalabella himself. Unique among the Lalabella churches, Beat Mariam retains vividly colored geometric and biblical scenes painted on shallowly carved walls, ceilings, and columns. Nearly all of the churches employ moldings and string courses to break their massive forms into smaller segments, a system of pathways links the churches and attendant ecclesiastical structures, including tombs, catacombs, and storerooms. Passing through this trench and tunnel system adds a physical dimension to the spiritual journey of moving between churches, narrow pathways guide visitors into a single file, allowing them to symbolically descend into the earth and up into heaven as a group. 1. Beat Medhain Alam, House of the Savior of the World, Home to the Lalabella Cross. It is reputedly the largest freestanding rock church in the world and has a beautiful architectural simplicity. It is surrounded by a wide courtyard whose walls are marked with carved graves or monk's cells, too. Beat Mariam, House of Miriam slash House of Mary, possibly the oldest of the churches, and a replica of the tombs of Adam and Christ. Who wouldn't want to visit a sacred pillar inscribed in two languages with the story of the construction of Lalabella and the Twelve Commandments? Especially if it glowed brightly until the 16th century, at which point it was veiled, never to be seen again. The pillar is found in Bet Meriam. 
a 10-meter high carved church, accessed by a short low tunnel from Bet Medhain Alam. Legend has it that this was the first church carved in Lalabella, and it remains a popular focus of pilgrimage today. 3. Beat Golgotha and Michael, House of Golgotha and Michael, known for its arts and said to contain the tomb of King Lalabella on the west of the northern cluster, you will find the twin churches of Golgotha and Michael, containing within Golgotha the tiny chapel of Celesi where King Lalabella is reputedly buried. You will have to take the word of the priests for this because the chapel is traditionally closed to non-ecclesiastical visitors. The two churches share a common entrance and form a semi-monolith. As with much of Lalabella, their origin and purpose is disputed but the heavy sense of sanctity as you walk slowly around is undisputed. Some say the churches were carved by Lalabella, others argue that they were built in the 15th century to mark the elevation of the late king by the Ethiopian church, 4. Beat Mescal, House of the Cross, sharing the courtyard, carved into the rock, is the tiny chapel of Bet Mescal and the even smaller Bet Dengal. 5. Beat Dinajel, House of Virgins, the last was allegedly built to honor the memory of 50 Christian nuns murdered by the Roman ruler, Julian the Apostate in the 4th century, the Western group, beat Georgius or Church of St. George, thought to be the most finely executed and best preserved church. Lalabella did a great job. The church is 15 meters high, the roof flush with ground level, the building surrounded by a courtyard with sheer rock walls. The visually impressive exterior is complemented by a contrastingly simple, but atmospheric interior. Come here at dawn if you can stomach the early morning, the Eastern Group, 1, Beat Emmanuel, House of Emmanuel, possibly the former royal chapel. Lalabella's homage to Old Oxum, Bet Emmanuel is the only full monolith in the southern cluster. 12 meters high and precisely decorated, it is thought to have been the private church of the royal family. It is easy to imagine the wide courtyard full of retainers and the pageant of imperial festivals. Now hermit cells have been carved into the soft rock and in abandoned niches old bones can be clearly seen. Inside the church, there's a beautiful staircase to an upper gallery, although access is currently restricted. In the southwest corner of the church, a since-closed passage descends underground connecting to the Beat Mercurios Church, too. Beat Mercurius, House of St. Mercurius. This cave church is dedicated to Mercurius, a 3rd century Coptic saint who was tortured and beheaded for his Christian beliefs by the Emperor Decius, going on to play a starring role in the death of the apostate Emperor Julian a century later. The church is dilapidated, with a rebuilt entrance and a faded interior, but its approach via a 35-meter unlit tunnel from Bet Babriel Raphael is remarkable. Done without a torch, it is another of those tests of faith that Ethiopians specialize in and is said to mimic a passage through hell, emerging into the light of the church. 3. Beat Abba Libanos, House of Abba Libanos, built around a cave in a vertical rock face, the roof is still connected to the original rock, while the tunnels separate the sides and back. Legend credits Mesical Kyber, Lalabella's wife, with the construction. 4. Beat Gabriel Ruffel, possibly a former royal palace, linked to a holy bakery. The church as a spiritual fortress is a well-known concept, but combining the two is rare. As the Axumite Empire collapsed in the political turbulence of the 7th and 8th centuries, it is thought that Bet Gabriel could have been a fortified palace for Lalabella, the high walls and excavated trench, which fills with water in the rain, create an impressive approach. While the interior is relatively simple and suitably mysterious. 5. Beat Liam, Bethlehem, House of Bread. A 50-meter tunnel links Libanos to the smaller Bet Liam, more of a monastic cell than a church, but it doesn't take much to imagine a king enjoying its privacy in moments of prayer. Farther afield, lie the monastery of Ashtan Maryam and Yemrahana Crestos Church, possibly 11th century, built in the Aksumite fashion, but within a cave. There is some controversy as to when some of the churches were constructed. David Buxton established the generally accepted chronology, noting that two of them follow, with great fidelity of detail, the tradition represented by Deborah Damo as modified at Yemrahana Christos. 
Since the time spent to carve these structures from the living rock must have taken longer than the few decades of King Lalabella's reign, Buxton assumes that the work extended into the 14th century. However, David Philipson, professor of African archaeology at University of Cambridge, has proposed that the churches of Mercorios, Gabriel Ruffel, and Dana Gel were initially carved out of the rock half a millennium earlier. As fortifications or other palace structures in the waning days of the Kingdom of Aksu, and that Lalabella's name simply came to be associated with them after his death. On the other hand, local historian Gedichu Makonen credits Lalabella, Lalabella's queen, with having one of the rock hewn churches, Beat Abu Labanos, built as a memorial for her husband after his death, contrary to claims made by pseudo archaeologist writers like Graham Hancock. Buxton states the great rock-hewn churches of Lalabella were not built with the help of the Knights Templar, asserting abundant evidence exists to show that they were produced solely by medieval Ethiopian civilization. For example, while Buxton notes the existence of a tradition that Abyssinians invoked the aid of foreigners to construct these monolithic churches, and admits that there are clearly signs of Coptic influence in some decorative details, hardly surprising given the theological, ecclesiastical, and cultural links between the Orthodox Tuahedo and Coptic Orthodox churches, he is adamant about the native origins of these creations, but the significant fact remains that the rock churches continue to follow the style of the local built-up prototypes, which themselves retain clear evidence of their basically axiomite origin. The churches are arranged in two main groups, connected by subterranean passageways. One group, Surrounded by a trench 36 feet, 11 meters, deep, includes House of Emmanuel, House of Mercurios, Abilabanos, and House of Gabriel, all carved from a single rock hill. House of Medhain Alam, Savior of the World, is the largest church, 109 feet, 33 meters, long, 77 feet, 23 meters, wide, and 35 feet, 10 meters, deep. House of Georgis, cruciform in shape, is carved from a sloping rock terrace. House of Golgotha contains Lalabella's tomb, and House of Mariam is noted for its frescoes. The interiors were hollowed out into naves and given vaulted ceilings, the expert craftsmanship of the Lalabella churches has been linked with the earlier church of Debradamo near Oxum and tends to support the assumption of a well-developed Ethiopian tradition of architecture. Emperor Lalabella had most of the churches constructed in his capital, Roa, in the hope of replacing ancient Aksum as a city of Ethiopian preeminence. Restoration work in the 20th century indicated that some of the churches may have been used originally as fortifications and royal residences. The churches attract thousands of pilgrims during the major Holy Day celebrations and are tended by priests of the Ethiopian Orthodox Tuahedo Church. The town also serves as a market center for the Amhara people, the churches are also a significant engineering feat, given that they are all associated with water, which fills the wells next to many of the churches, exploiting an artesian geological system that brings the water up to the top of the mountain ridge on which the city rests. Even beyond another millennia, we're not likely to know with certainty the answer to why. Why attempt what must have seemed impossible? No answer was apparent until we chipped away at what we saw Christmas Day. In the Old Testament, Isaiah advises those who seek God to, look to the rock from which you were cut and the quarry from which you were hewn. Whoever cut this rock, angels or man, understood that, in the presence of a miracle, faith is never washed away, centuries after its construction, Lalabella remains home to a large community of Ethiopian Orthodox priests and nuns. Since the 12th century, the city has been a continued site of religious practice and popular pilgrimage. Gatherings of pilgrims are especially large on major feast days and on Orthodox Christmas, Jenna, held on January 7 in the Gregorian calendar. The focus of multiple conservation and restoration efforts since the 1960s. The Lalabella churches were inscribed as a UNESCO World Heritage Site in 1978. Improved transportation to the site has increased the number of tourists and pilgrims visiting each year, making continued preservation and study efforts a high priority. The first European known to see these churches was the Portuguese explorer Piro de Covilha, 1460 to 1526. 
a Portuguese priest, Francisco Alvarez, 1465-1540, accompanied the Portuguese ambassador on a visit to Dawit II in the 1520s. Alvarez described the unique church structures as follows, I weary of writing more about these buildings, because it seems to me that I shall not be believed if I write more. I swear by God, in whose power I am. That all I have written is the truth. Although Ramuso included the plans of several of these churches in his 1550 printing of Alvarez's book, it is unknown who provided him with the drawings. The next reported European visitor to Lalabella was Miguel de Castanhoso, who was a soldier under Cristóvão de Gama and left Ethiopia in 1544. After de Castanhoso, more than 300 years passed until another European, Gerhard Rolfs, visited Lalabella sometime between 1865 and 1870. According to the Futu al habasa of Siab ad-Din Ahmad, Ahmad ibn Ibrahim al-Ghazi burned one of the churches of Lalabella during his invasion of Ethiopia. However, Richard Pankhurst has expressed skepticism about this, pointing out that although Siab ad-Din Ahmad provided a detailed description of a rock-hewn church, it was carved out of the mountain. Its pillars were likewise cut from the mountain, only one church is mentioned, Pankhurst adds that, what is special about Lalabella, as every tourist knows, is that it is the site of eleven or so rock churches, not just one, and they are all within more or less a stone's throw of each other, Pankhurst also notes that the Royal Chronicles, which mention Ahmad al-Ghazi's laying waste to the district between July and September 1531, are silent about him ravaging the fabled churches of this city. He concludes by stating that had Ahmad al-Ghazi burned a church at Lalabella, it was most likely beat Medhain Alam, and if the Muslim army was either mistaken or misled by the locals, then the church he set fire to was Gan Adamarium, 10 miles, 16 kilometers, east of Lalabella which likewise has a colonnade of pillars cut from the mountain, protection and management requirements, for centuries. The church and state have been jointly responsible for the holy site of Lalabella. Home to a large community of priests and monks, it is a living site which draws many pilgrims to celebrate the great feasts of the Ethiopian Christian calendar. This active and energetic perspective is central to the management of the site. No special legal framework is provided to protect the rock-hewn churches except the General Law, Proclamation No. 209-2000, which has also established the institution in charge, the authority for research and conservation of cultural heritage. With the Ethiopian Church as a partner, the ARCCH has a representative in Lalabella but a principal difficulty has been the harmonization of the different projects and effective coordination between the partners, the property is administered under the regional and the Lasta District Culture and Tourism Office. To prevent the property from the impact of development, a draft proclamation has been prepared but this is not yet ratified. A management plan has not yet been established. A four-year conservation plan was established in 2006 but this has yet to be fully implemented, the boundary for the property has not yet been clearly delineated and a buffer zone has not yet been provided, there is a need for stronger planning controls for the setting of the churches that address housing land use tourism and for a management plan to be developed that integrates the conservation action plan and addresses the overall sustainable development of the area with the involvement of the local population.